Get going. Six call, uh, called meeting to order. Uh, we, do we have minutes or no? No. No minutes? Okay. Um, appointments. Judy and Donna. That would be Donna Wiley and Judy Martin. Do you want to come to the front row? Yes. Please join us. Well, you have, I think you have the letter from Alan right. Sanderson yeah. about the painting of the back side of town hall and the, the situation. And, and, and just so people are aware, it's the letter is from Alan as, as chair of the of the CPC uh, <coughs> requesting some painting be done on the east side of town hall. So yeah, I was just giving context. Right, right, no, that's right. Thanks, right. Yeah. So the history is that um, the town approved painting the entire town hall two years ago, two and a half years ago. Decided not to, sorry, 2012, sorry, four years ago. Decided not to paint the back side, the east side, because at that point it appeared that, as you know, a major renovation would be taking place. Um, the money is there. In fact, more money is in the account probably than will probably be needed for that. And it's very badly in need of repair. Um, the other, uh, and fainting rather, the, uh, the other relevant facts are that if we can move forward in complete planning for the um, use of Town Hall as a community center, that the funding is going to be, and I don't know what other funding there would be, a combination of CPC funding and state grants of various sorts, plus <coughs> some private fundraising, the earliest it could possibly start, and I mean possibly, would be the fall of 2017. Um, so, and I bet it would be the spring, because it would probably take us that long to get organized. Um, and I guess the third relevant point, and I think um, Helen uh, attached the, um, section of the rear of the proposed condition is that even if the current plan is carried out, three quarters of the back wall won't be affected. So it's, it's, this is not a situation where we'd be painting something <coughs> and ripping it off in a couple of weeks. And I think that's... The original job um, cost a little over $9,000 aside. Um, in 2012 or whenever it was done yeah, a few years ago? Yeah, it was ago. probably yeah, done. It was probably done in 13. Um, yeah. So obviously you have to bring as much equipment there to do one side as you do three, so that would raise it some in time. So we're estimating somewhere around twelve, fourteen thousand dollars, but we don't know. There's twenty eight thousand dollars remaining in the CPA reserve mm -hmm. amount. For this purpose. For this for this specific purpose. Yeah, already approved. Not one of the three categories, but this specific purpose. It was voted by it's by left community. over from, from yeah. the, previous okay. one so it's just sitting there and I guess the other relevant fact is that after um, we heard I think Alan heard that you the select board had decided to defer moving forward with the project we discussed it again in our meeting Wednesday and voted unanimously to bring it before you again and Fred email me from Michigan he wanted some comments Fred if I could sure okay okay who's, who's the chair uh, I am. He is still because Fred's not here. We can, you're not chair until Fred oh, gets back. I can't do without me. <laughs> <laughs> Darn. Okay, so Fred writes, I am so opposed to spending taxpayer money painting a, a wall that at least half will, will be removed from the way to live probably next year. Excuse me. There are more reasons for not painting now, even though many is available in a painting account. Let's show that we are using taxpayer money wisely. My reason for not painting, not painted now are one half or more of the wall will be removed for the addition. The paint is peeling but not real bad. There's no deterioration or rotting of the siding and the trim board's paint is in good condition. The, the, this wall can be painted when the addition will be painted possibly as soon as next year. This is more than just painting. It also involves lead uh, paint abatement by a certified contractor. This has not been discussed recently by the NBC and the NBC has not recommended this be done now. So. Those are Fred's comments from Michigan. I'd like to, may I comment on his comments? First, it was discussed at the NBC before this, in February, when the CPA delegates reported that they had decided to go ahead and there was no objection. Um, second, I think if you look at the photos, the top one on the top right does show some damage to the, to this trim. 
and the silk. And also that, you know, looking at the planned elevation, it looks to me like no more than a third of the building and probably more like, the, the CPA people thought more like a quarter, but it's, it's, it's definitely not a half. And most of, and I guess last, even if work starts, you know, we hope we'll get all the money all at once. We don't for sure know we're going to get any of it. You know, if, if we had it to do over again, we would have painted off, the, you know, with 2020 hindsight, um, we would have painted all four walls when we did, did the three, and we wish we had. Um, if, if anything is not to be funded, it's probably the accessibility lift, the grants for that. I mean, we're really hoping for grants for that. We're going to try hard to get grants for that. But if, if we don't succeed in getting the whole project done, that will be the part that's delayed. Um, you can decide tonight, or you can defer <coughs> until Fred is back. Yeah, the well, other comment, like, about, I, uh, one more, about yeah. the lead abatement. If that's done <clears throat> now by, and by the guy with the expertise, which is what it was before, and the scraping is done now, then when the final project is done and we need the building painted to, for all of the work, then presumably we can get the sheriff's crew to do it because it won't be a lead abatement process. So in one sense, this will save. I mean, you do have the option to wait till the uh, Yeah, and, and I'm playing catch up here a little bit because this, this vote was taken when, you when I was right. not here. Right. Um, and as much as I think I'm probably sympathetic to, and I'm speaking for myself, obviously. Yes, you are. Um, <clears throat> as much as I'm probably sympathetic to what the CPC is requesting, um, I'm, I'm not going to take a vote without the three of us here because it's not fair. Um, this whole town hall thing has been a tough thing for all of us for uh, four years now, if not more, and to make decisions without one person here. And I'm not saying that what happened before, just we can't continue that um, because that just pulls the town apart more rather than bringing it together. That being said, I, you know, we, we tried to do this, and you know, Fred can hear my comments. We tried to be fiscally responsible with town money three years ago by not painting one of the sides because the project was imminent by some estimates. Um, and it didn't happen, you know, things happen. So I, you know, I'm, I'm eager to, to, to discuss it in, in greater length, but I also, I don't remember the last time this vote, this town and better memories than mine might prevail. I don't remember the last time that this town went against the recommendation of a committee for this kind of money. We, we, we have committees because we trust their judgment. But I, again, I'm not going to vote on this. I, this. I like the information though. Is that you in or? I would vote for it if we voted, but since both John and Fred seem to be for delaying the vote, I can wait. Unless there's a cogent reason to vote right now, which I'm just the nice dry weather. Every nice other dry weather. weather. Yeah, yeah. But, no, it's not great. But, but again, we're, we're, this is a very sensitive issue, and we, we can't be making votes with mm -hmm. one of us not here. And mm -hmm. you know, the reality is, we're, we're a volunteer board, and we're not all going to be here all the time. Yeah, I, I, I do. I just want to say again, the notion that more than half will be removed is obviously untrue. I mean, half, <laughs> if you draw the line I, vertically, that's half. I give, it, it, just more, I give it more than a third because you're going to have to touch yeah. beyond the bounds of right, that right, of course. structure. Of course. And so I'll even give it half, but it's not more than half, certainly. I think a site visit might be doable. Probably a good idea. 
You can well, see, you well, can see, you can see the, the existing. Right. But you that, that being that. said, the site visit should, I'm sorry. You can see the existing structure in the photo on the second page. If you want to. Yeah, no, I looked at it. I looked at it. That being said, in my mind, a site visit is best accomplished with someone who really, really knows what they're talking about. Um, there to describe the pros and cons, an unbiased third party. Mm -hmm. That'd be fine, but I, I think just the site visit by you folks would be it's probably It's probably a good idea, but again, I would want an unbiased third party there. I think it'd sit there for 10 years, no harm. Well, okay, but. That's just my opinion. Yeah. So. Okay, so you're gonna put it on the agenda for the 13th? And if you want to put, try to put together a site visit sure. okay. beforehand. Are you okay with the site visit? I'm fine. I don't know if I can make it, but I can stop by and look at it. And who will be unbiased third party? I don't know. By July 13th. The, the, cha the challenge with that is that I'm going <clears> to <throat> make a guess that there's no one in this room that's an unbiased third party. Um, Joe might be. <laughs> 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 Joe's happy. He's allowed to I say appreciate it. <laughs> um, you know, uh, well, we'll, 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 again, it may not be the, it may not be, it may not be possible. My wonderful scenario of having an unbiased third party, but it'd be great. Who's willing to do it just out of the kindness of? Because Darcy's a painter. What's that? Darcy's a painter. Yeah, well, but I'm not sure she was on the committee. Yeah, no. <clears throat> right. right. But that's she's a not, professional. She she's was not anymore. She was yeah. on the right. committee, um, but she's not unbiased. She's, she's a professional right. painter. So I truly don't think you need an unbiased. I think if you, everyone just goes and does a site review, uses their best judgment, you can decide whether or not it's in the imminent danger of. Well, Dan, I get that, but I mean, I'll 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 fall on my own sword. I'm not sure I know rotting boards. Bob Hallow would tell me I have rotting boards in my house. Yeah, you won't see rotting boards other than down. Wow. But, but that's my point. Unbiased. I don't see rotting boards on my house, but somebody else would tell me that I that I have one. So yeah, this isn't a question. Can't be any worse than Wavy uh, West Wavy Church. I mean, did volunteers? I was going to say, if you take a look at it and you tell me it needs painting, that's good enough for me. Or it doesn't need painting, that's good enough for me. So take a look at it sometime. Come to the next meeting or give me a call. Okay. All right. Um, we'll talk about it on the thirteenth. Okay. And then if we do have a site visit, we will publicize that site visit. And if there's two of you, we'll be there, yes. Ah, I'll do my best. The next couple weeks are during the... Fred's, during back, the, Fred's back on the 5th, so I can work for something after that. I'm you, back on the 12th. <laughs> and when are you, are you gone all next week? Or? I'm leaving on Saturday, this Saturday. Okay. So we can try for something maybe on the 12th? Yeah, that's... Well, you're back on the 12th. Yeah, back on the 12th. You could even do it the 13th. I, I got to look at my calendar. Okay. So, we'll so. do it. Okay. Well, okay. The other thing you, you could do is put a caveat on it that we painted it and the vote doesn't pass. Sure, yeah. yeah, we don't even know when the vote's going to be. What vote? Well, what it's vote? probably going to be within a year. The, the, the uh, $1.4 million bond vote. We don't. You're, you're way ahead of yourself. I mean, I, I, the town voted, the CPC recommended, and the town voted to paint the entire building mm -hmm. 40 years ago. <laughs> you know, this isn't a question of whether it's imminently in need. It's an unfinished piece of business that has been approved. Yeah, all but that you're around. about to hopefully tear into. I mean, it just, well, I mean, it's like painting this well, wall. But I think Dan, her tear. point was the rationale. That was the rationale that we used when we didn't no, I do that. The rationale still stands. Okay. Um, all right. Um, let's move on. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, you guys. Okay. Um, Dan. Yes. You're awesome. Thank you. And if you could tell us who you are and where you're from. <clears throat> sure. My name is Dan Nietzsche. I represent the Franklin Regional Council of Governments and also the Franklin County Regional Planning uh, Committee. A couple of, uh, Sure, definitely. Thank you. Here's the, uh, the agreement. You know, 
This would have been covered had we had a county government system in place. Well, the county government is sort of crawling back to the guys that prefer county. They don't need some county government. Some let's get rid of it. Now it's all regionalized and let's get the county yeah, government. Regionalization is a good thing. But well, the count, the, there are some counties that, would still, that still have county commissioners. I like the county government. All right. Um, so, what do you think? Yeah. All right. <laughs> So basically, uh, <clears throat> how this came about was after the uh, um, storm, Irene, uh, there was an after action review uh, done. And one of the outcomes of that, one of the, the things that needed to be completed in Franklin County was the creation of a multi-agency coordination center. <clears throat> basically what that is, is it's a regional approach to emergency management within Franklin County. Um, it will help to coordinate, uh, disseminate information um, help the town of Whaley with their emergency management um, issues. Um, basically, as I like to put it, it's an extension of your emergency management professionals. Um, <clears throat> put it easy enough, uh, let's start with what the MAC won't do. It's not going to supersede any local decisions. Um, it's not going to have a command and control structure. And in other words, it's not going to come in and tell you uh, what, what's best for your town. It's, if you think of it as a bank of um, subject, subject matter experts along with um, labor force, they can help you to find and procure resources, uh, share resources, um, can help you with public information uh, activities such as um, if you need a public information officer, if you need um, press releases written, it can help with record keeping. So if the event was large enough and you had a lot of resources and assets moving in and out of Whaley, uh, they can help you to track that. So you can, if there were a emergency declaration um, issued, you could have that information available for reimbursement. Uh, <clears throat> it's really uh, kind of a one-stop shop <coughs> for helping out. Uh, during emergencies. And even if you wanted uh, some help during, if you have a large activity, that uh, large fair or a celebration, the, the MAC can certainly help you out with that also. Um, the MAC is also going to be collecting situational awareness information all across the county and sending that out to member towns and communities um, to help you understand what's going on and the towns that surround you and also the counties that surround you. Right now, the concept um, is functioning great in Berkshire County and also Barnstable County. Um, this is the phase two. Uh, phase one was Berkshire County. Uh, it's working great, like I said, in North Adams and uh, trying to get it started here in Franklin County. Thus far, about 16 towns have signed on. Um, waiting on some answers from a few others. It's going along very well. Um, that's about it. I mean, as you look through the paperwork, it's kind of an, in it, the MAC in a nutshell. Um, the relationship, a lot of people want to know the relationship with the MAC and MEMA and any of that overlap and bureaucracy level, <coughs> another level. Um, the MAC, it, it, it could be, if used incorrectly, uh, the MAC could be another level that you'd have to go through to get to MEMA. But the way that I like to propose it is if Whaley was hit by a large incident, um, generally speaking, communities don't necessarily have the assets to be chasing down resources or to do some of the things that um, you can't do out in the field very effectively. The MAC will be able to assist you in that, uh, thus increasing your efficiency and response activities. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Looks 
like another layer of bureaucracy on top of what we got NEMA and we've got our emergency, we got Lynn Sibley, our emergency management director. What is, do you know what Lynn thinks about this? I Marianne? don't know. Okay. And my other question is, uh, two questions. So it seems to me if we had a, some big disaster like the Connecticut River flooded, Hampshire County would be involved, Hampton County would be involved. Uh, those counties are also in the MAC, not the MAC, but, well, I guess they have MACs of their own, do they? They don't currently, no. They don't. And it, does this cost us anything? No cost at this time. At this and I, time. I say that at this time because this is um, grant funded. Ah, grant funded. Well, we had our police department grant funded back in the back in the day, and now we've got a big police department. So, the operating costs, yearly operating costs, is about thousand dollars a year. It is anticipated that the REPC is going to be able to cover that cost on a yearly basis. The only reason why we would the REPC would see passing on some costs to the member communities was if there was a large amount of activities going on and we were burning through resources where it out, outstretched the, the sources. Um, and to answer your question about another level, <clears throat> um, like I said before, it's, it's very easy for a community to become overwhelmed with <coughs> response activities and not have the, the labor force backing them up to be able to handle the documentation to be able to talk with MEMA or other uh, agencies that are responding. And then even more importantly, in the, re the, the uh, recovery phase, when you're trying to get reimbursement, if you don't have all your paperwork exactly correct, FEMA will not process those paperwork. You won't get the maximum reimbursement you'll be able to get. So it's, it's really, <coughs> um, and the win-win-win of this is if you sign on, and you don't want to use the Mac even during an event, you don't use the Mac. The Mac is just there. It's a, it's a resource that you can use. Are we committing ourselves to any period of time? If we sign the thing, how many years are we locked in? Uh, it's a three-year term with uh, one-year renewals. With a three-year term with one-year? The, the MOU is good for three years, Okay. but it renews annually. It renews, meaning we have to say we want to keep doing it. If you don't say anything, it automatically renews. But can we say we want to stop talking? Yeah, you can so stop anytime you want. Okay. Yeah. So I guess I'm confused. What was the genesis behind this? During yeah. Irene. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't in the area. But from, from what I understand, reading the after action reports, there was a, um, an issue with communication across the different towns and resource coordination. And that's something that the MAC would be able to have a more cohesive emergency management um, apparatus in place to handle those large, large scale disasters. So what would, let's say, I know Shelburne was in trouble with flooding waters. Um, right. So what would MAC have done that wasn't able to be done to deal with the flood of Irene? Uh, not necessarily deal with the the flood itself and the response activities, but it would have been able to back up Shelburne and explain some of the things that I've heard from folks in that area in West County was that they didn't know what was going on in other communities. So the, the MAC would be able to reach out to those other communities, help them develop a plan, get all the stakeholders into a communication loop, and better respond as a whole to that emergency. Well, one thing I could see possibly useful, but correct me if I'm being optimistic, Remember, we had, <clears throat> we've had some damage, and uh, it took us a long time to get reimbursed by NEMA and FEMA. Just even going through the whole Mill, Mill River phase, I don't think it would qualify, but I mean, he's right. If you don't have everything lined up exactly, it's a time-consuming process to- Well, the NEMA the thing, yeah, the Mill River thing, but then we had that sort of microburst where we had a- uh, That was, what, 10, 11 That was a long time ago, ago we had seven inches of rain in one afternoon, and that cost what? 2008. Yeah, so eight years ago. No, it was more than that. It was longer than that, I think. Sarah's graduation was really through our house. Was it eight? 
there so was John Bob, Hannum's as a victim of road. that emergency, were you adequately provided for by the authorities in charge in terms of filing claims or getting in information about whatever? There was no, there was no damage at my house, but no. it went. It, went it was everywhere. Pretty, it went pretty close. I mean, people at the graduation party and went up towards center town, they couldn't get through the center town. Right. All those it, trees were down through there. Haydenville Road. Oh, yeah. Down by um, the Kirkendalls was. Yeah. You know, people had to get back to 91. Well, uh, so that, get, that brings me back to my, my concern where maybe this is useful among maybe other areas that I'm not conversant with <clears throat> is uh, getting us state funding to pay back our expenses in a timely fashion. Would MAC advocate for us vis a vis? MEMA or FEMA, that would be useful, I think. I don't know if they would advocate or... Uh, would they accelerate or expedite the they would, process? They would certainly, if you ask them to, be able to keep the records that you needed to be able to facilitate that process. I'm just not sure keeping records was our problem. <coughs> I think it was getting the money from the state in a timely fashion that was the issue. Yeah, I, think that, I can't imagine anybody could get money from the state in a timely fashion. But if these people could, more power too. Yeah. No, I, I can't. I yeah. can't control how the state. You know. Well, yeah. money. I, I, I guess I'm I'm struggling with this conversation because it should be a conversation that we have with the chief of police in here and the fire chief mm -hmm. and the head of scams because they're the ones who respond in emergency management scenarios. And Lynn Sibley. And Lynn Sibley. I mean, I, all all the stakeholders. Right. Um. I mean, I, and they could, they would have better questions than we do because sure. they—that's what their job is. Um, and again, I, if I'm nothing else, I hope I'm pretty consistent that you listen to the people who you have on the front lines. Can we get them at our? Can we table yet another topic to the next meeting? Well, I'm wondering maybe for the, the meeting at the end of July because you do have a special town meeting on the 13th. Yeah, I would agree with and that. And you're getting a little probably bogged down, so are you right. okay coming back at the end of July? Uh, it depends on the day. We're, we're is this reaching, a, I'm reaching out to all the time. Are, so are you, is this time sensitive? Or well, you don't have, not. well, I, I, I think if they have questions, I'd like them, I'd like to Yeah, you should be here, but. At <clears> this point, we're looking at July 26th, yeah. which is a Tuesday. Uh, that, I, don't, I agree with John. I, I don't think we're ready to say, this is a great idea, because I just saw it like three, 10 minutes ago. And I mean, it, I've expressed my feelings about this, so I would be happy for the people who know what they're talking about to be involved in the conversation. And, and it would be cool if, you know, I don't know if you saw the, the photos from, you know, Route 2 washed out in Coleraine. Oh, of course. And, you know, I saw the videos. And it would be great if someone could have, and maybe they did get in touch with us and say, hey, we need three trucks and five people. And it might have happened, but it might not happen. But Keith and and those guys would have more information on on that level of communication or lack of communication than, than we do. Yeah, it's a um, you know talking to about equipment and, and people and moving them around. And it, I think it takes the Mac was going to have a a local touch to be able to reach out to communities within Franklin County to find those assets for you quicker than uh, I. I Hazardous say MEMA might. Um, I, I think that through the process, once the MAC gets rolling and we start having tabletop exercises and, and, and work out the particulars of how the concepts of operations fits into the emergency management scheme within Franklin County, I think you're going to see that it's going to make emergency management in Franklin County uh, a whole lot better uh, and more efficient and effective. Um, you know, it's one of the things that I'm sort of fighting against is we don't have a lot of activity in Franklin County um, that's on the grand ski scale. Right. Uh, so I think that's one of the reasons why, uh, you know, this, this is a win-win because it kind of sits in the back pocket of the towns and communities that sign on for it. And uh, you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to, you know, think about it until the need arises. And then you have that labor force, you have that that expertise there to give you a hand during those emergencies. And, and I, I get yeah, it. I mean, it's not like natural disasters are going away. 
No. <laughs> uh, all right. So I'll, I'll reach out and coordinate with you and everybody else. That'd be great. Right. Okay. Good. All right. Well, thank you very much for coming by. All right. Thank you. And we'll read up on this in more detail. Excellent. And maybe we'll share it with <coughs> other right. stakeholders. Right. Oh, yeah. Uh, any questions? Great. You want a couple? Yeah. Okay. She has enough for me. Okay. But, thanks. All right. Okay. Frontier Regional. Did you guys come up front? Building sub. No, Patty's up. What? We're we're here. The Brain Trust. It's um. You're the you're the brain. You're the brain. You're the brain. You're the brain. You're the trust. Okay. I'll sit back here and hit him on the head. Or as otherwise known as the three fill in the blanks. Two bobs and a fill. Two bobs and a fill. What do we got, you guys? Well, um, to touch base with you regarding the uh, the PowerPoint uh, uh, lease uh, thing that you had sent to us, and to go to to see where we can go with that, because when we when we were here earlier, we kind of talked about two different things, sort of uh, a concept of actual cost, and then a separate concept that was sort of brought in about maybe in some people's mind linking what was being charged to us to what was being charged to skims so we kind of just when, when we got a proposal that said that this was like an initial proposal make make a counter offer or whatever like we where are we in the, because the the a proposal of what we saw and then make a counter offer is kind of not really actual cost. The dollar figures that we gave to scams were based upon as close to exact costs as we foresee this building incurring, either known costs or anticipated costs, because we haven't been here that long. And it, it was, and then those costs were placed into a formula, so that that, and it was based upon the square footage that scams will be. Um, Will. Utilizing. That's. Really? I believe that. Um, I don't know. Um, and I think the point, the point that I would hope would be made, would be that that same formula would be applied to the schools. The town of Waitley, for my opinion, is not in the business of making money. The town of Waitley is in the business of of being a regional partner and covering costs. Um, so. In my mind, the same formula that everyone thought was a very fair and valid formula for skims, and that and, and, and their use of the, of the property, would be the same formula that we that we utilized for the schools. Not a little more, not a little less, just the exact. See, and our thinking about that was that that struck us as a little bit. I don't want to say unfair, but um, but that. With SCEMS, they, had a, they have specific needs for space structured in such a way that they have to issue RFPs and require a garage. That's above and beyond. Whereas we're like a fungible, just office space. That's, but, 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 yeah, yeah the formula that it has nothing to do with, with build out costs. Nothing. It was once they are in that, what is it, 1,500 square feet or something? What if once they are in that ballpark of 1,500 square feet? This is the cost of services, snow removal, whatever it is, excluding utilities because utilities are an unknown and, and different organizations are gonna use utilities in different ways. Although I believe we said we would deal with the electric bill with us and Frontier and SCEMS would have right, their own meter. I think you weren't here for that meeting, but. <laughs> a lot happens apparently when I'm not here. I, Why would we say that? Because it was easier, and correct me, you're a little more familiar with it, but I understood it, and this is what came out from the meeting, was that it would be easier just to, sh to basically apportion out the electric bill for Frontier um, rather than have to get them into a separate A line meter and of, service and right. all that stuff. That because no, they're, cause our functions and their functions are similar. Like and the, like how the HVAC is set up. Right, I, I kind of buy that. And SCEMS can, can, can separate. Can, can be and they're going to be 24 hours where the schools right. aren't. So, so well, that's not the point. The point was also that physically they can meter themselves separately. They can have their own service 
Well, you can do that what with level, any. What makes sense, but well, yeah, yeah, but but it, it, it's what's the practicality? It's of more it? expensive to chop it up and. There seem to be. So you saying that stems is going to have their own electric and a meter yeah. versus the tool. That bus. was my understanding. Right. Two of us will just right. have, one have the same meter. Well, split whatever the space works out to be. If it's fifty percent or forty percent or whatever, whatever that proportion is. So, that's what so I guess this like. part was lost on me. I assumed all along that our physical space and the school's physical space should it get this far. Should what? Should it get that far? Should, should it get that yeah. far? Okay. What about? Would that? be still divided out where the schools would have their working area, and we'd have common areas, obviously, yeah. Yeah. and the town offices would have, and employees would have right. their common right. or their area. Still the idea. Yeah. So, it, other than the it, it, the difference is that SCEMS is a twenty four hour system where we're eight to five, whatever it is. Otherwise, why wouldn't you? If you're going to have separate, separate floor plans anyway, why wouldn't you meet them? Just put it on separate meters. Because the, how the wiring is set up, it was easier just to, for, for them and less less expensive to keep keep them the light the way it is, and then just put them on a separate meter in terms of the gas. And you couldn't make that same argument for the skims part. I'm not the guy. I mean, I mean, you, you, you can speak to that. Walls are walls. And <clears throat> John, well, the issue with the electric is. In the garage area, there's already a, a big sub panel for the electric out there, so it'd be very easy for SCEMS to put a separate meter on that service and go off of that panel for their build out area in the garage. I think to do it for the school area would be a little more difficult because you'd have to come out of the mechanical room, create another service and sub panel. So and the infrastructure that. exists all the way over, but it doesn't. Okay. Right. right. That, that, that's and, the, and the gas thing, I think we talked about that before. Right. You know, skims, there's a separate feed pipe that goes over to the garage area. They just tee that off into a separate meter. We already talked with the Berkshire Gas Company about that. It wouldn't be an additional service, you know, because of the moratorium, but it it's, can't and, be done. And it'd be more difficult to set up Frontier with their own HVAC system. So we would again prorate the cost according to square footage. Right. right again, I, I see it as the, the, the functions yeah. are similar. But, but they do have their own condenser set up for that room. Air conditioning condenser. Frontier one. Yeah. Well, that's good. No. I mean, you know, most most rental spaces, correct me if I'm not aware, but most rental spaces, yeah. Yeah. But you pay a flat fee. Condenser. You pay a flat fee. I mean, that's, you know, we saw this, okay, separate for electric, okay, except for electric, so air conditioning, heat's going to be different. So, I mean, it's not really 8,000 square foot. It's going to be $8 plus whatever it's going to be. We don't know what the utilities are going to run you. We have no idea. You know, when people do that, they have a pretty good sense of what the utility bills are going to be. Right. We have no idea. It could well, be a dollar, it could be 100000 A lot of landlord agreements are a square footage cost plus utilities. Well, we're, you're talking right. landlord, we're talking rent, you know. Well, commercial. You're talking about commercial. But there's there's the track the record there where the plus can be sort of readily ascertained. Well, unfortunately, we don't have that, track Exactly. Record. That's, have we, we have, have one year. Have we talked to the library, they must have some type of records if they're doing the whole it, building. They, you, can't, but they, you can't compare. You can't compare. You can't compare. I mean, they were using the entire building at, at its height, and so, and then it came down to just a small area, so there's real no comparison. Yeah, really, there, there was also temperature control. The garage area and the big book area. Area, the open area had a very low right. minimal standard, so it, it wasn't a representative figure. I think we really have to we have to live here for a while. years figure to kind of set it in stone. You know, I I guess my my take on the whole thing is that you know, who knows? You may you may not have anybody renting any space over there if you know other people drag their feet. We're looking at another we're looking at other space too, so. I hate to have that big space plus the garage area stay empty. We would too, at, that, as a taxpayer saying that. That's why the eight dollars a square foot we think is a very attractive. Unfortunately, five dollars came out of someone's mouth back in the day when stems. We're going to say now two years ago talked about there a year and a half ago. Five dollars came out of someone's mouth and it was recorded in. Put in the newspaper at five bucks a square foot. Well, yeah, that, that, that's ancient history. Okay, I'm just 
but it was but it was brought up. I mean, it, it would be different if it was something said it on the street corner. It would be lovely if it could be five dollars. I'd be offer a dollar if we could afford it. But, but again, sure it's, it's why the formula is such a a smart direction because again, when we came up with the scams number, it wasn't out of thin air. It was these are our actual costs, and the reason utilities were pulled out because we didn't know every other cost or most other costs. We know, and we just put it into the formula, and and that's why it seems. Why wouldn't we do the exact same thing for the school? And you just have X number of square foot, square feet, as with scams, and and, and call it a day. And also for scams, somebody came up with a much bigger number that was in the paper at some point. I forget who that was, but you know it went back and forth and. The commercial value, I guess, the going rate is more like 15 an hour, and of course, we're not a commercial entity; we're a nonprofit public entity, and you are too. And so, and so, it's scam. So we want people to be on an equal footing. So that's our that's our intention. If we knew better what the real actual figures are going to be, if we could read the future for the future winters, we would certainly use those figures. I just, you know, I we know how much we could spend a year as as what we spent that down at the blue school a year for the last three years and we know how much we can spend if we if we start spending any more than that and we know there's going to be five years of paying for renovations you know for what we have to put into it and stuff but it's you know it just seems like you know we're it's not like we want to put money in back into that thing down the road here but you know it's we are sort of we are sort of structurally incapable of dealing with uncertainty on like this level kind of thing. Just uh, the, it, we to we totally depend on the consent of the governed. Unlike the county guy that was just here, we totally depend on the consent of the governed. They have to. We have to be able to say this is what it's going to cost. Well, we can't before. eliminate risk or uncertainty. We just nobody can do that. Right? And we're, so we're trying to minimize it. So you have a better idea. Right. We're trying to give you the best idea we have. And that's all we can do. If it's not good enough, we can't right. pretend it's good enough. But let me ask you guys, what would, let's assume that this building didn't exist. You've talked about the need for a new, a couple new systems in the new school, in the blue school. Whatever those costs are, I'm sure you have. I, at least I would hope, hope you do. And I know that most organizations have some capital plan that that they that they factor into their fees assessed and all, all that kind of stuff. And the four towns have already put in X amount of dollars into renovation through a bond issue and what have you. So are are you saying that the cost of a new boiler and, and whatever else it is, you would know what I am, is that much more than paying a rental fee to the town of Waitley? I, 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 I just don't, I, I don't know, because I know there are a lot of people out there who are saying, wait a second, we just spent all this money on renovating this building for the long term. And the minute it's... And we have, and we, we, we I know. know the new windows, we did this, I, we did that. I know, and, but it was done yeah, assuming been, that you'd be around for a while. Yeah. But you gotta remember, if you haven't been there in a while, take a walk down cellar, and you'll you know we'll see what we're talking about. It just so. But what's the cost comparison? I guess is my question. Definitely a half million dollars. Is what? About a half million if we did everything that we need to do to bring it up to snuff. A new boiler, elevator. To do there's all no the access. There's no handicap accessibility right now, problem. which is which is hurting us. Which is a huge problem. John, just, you were gonna say. Yeah, I think, you know, the school, you guys need to realize that I think part of the deal is, you know, the use of the kitchen area, you know, we're going to create a walkthrough area there, so that's, you know, money that you're not spending elsewhere for that. Uh, use of this room, you know, for meetings and training and so forth, you know, there's a lot of other things, you know, common areas of this building and useful areas of this building are going to be accessible for you guys. See? You really got to look at that too, and I think the eight dollars a square foot. Uh, we, we've had, we've, John, we've had, as you know, John, we've been except for tomorrow, we've had a meeting every single Tuesday, and Marty Baird, as you know, is retired now, but she's also offered for a month or so to come on board still with the new superintendent to help us out still with this, 
We met with her for the first time last Tuesday. And, you know, we're looking at population of the kids at the high school. Sure. Sure. The prop, the, it's dropping. We're looking at space at the high school. Plain and simple. Middle school. Can we, can we, can we, can we get into there? Yeah. It, it's feasible, but it's, it's not, it's not perfect. You know, this is, I'm not going to say it's perfect, perfect. We could use a little bit more square footage. You know, we could use another 300 square feet, 200 square feet, and that would take care of a few of our little problems that we have when we've been, you know, cost analysis. We had somebody come in, and I haven't seen those figures yet for creating offices and, and um, cubicles over here and stuff, so I haven't seen that yet. Uh, but it's, you know, we're looking at the high school just to, you know, save money, but it's, it's not, it's not a, we have to displace some people, move some people, and it's, the problem is it's, it's, it's going to cost us there too. Sure. <clears throat> My ideal world would be, and I, and I really do think that the, the formula that we put together is a, is a pretty fair formula, um, is that if this works and we have both the ambulance service and the school district looking to use this space that we all sit down and we all say, okay, in our ideal world, we all have a thousand extra square feet. You know, ideal worlds are a thing of the past, apparently. Oh, and they and never were. They never were, but perhaps. So I, I just, true. if we all want to make it work, then we should sit down and figure out how to make it work. Because I, I believe that the, that the ambulance will be in this building. And I'd like to believe that the schools will be in this building. And I, and I think we all want to live happily ever after together. Let's sit down and figure out who can live with what. And, 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 and just end of story. I, I don't get, I, I, I don't know what the cost would be. Is there square footage more or less than what SCAMS is going to be getting? Less. Less. Well, including the garage. Uh, right, 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 right. So their so their their total not is less. Yeah, but it's still, but it's still heated. The same formula. It's still a heated area. Right, it's the same formula, right? But but a lot of the formula is based upon the square footage and that's right. all. Yeah. Well, that's how you come up with their rent figure. Right, exactly, and it's less, and so it just. It, so, it, so I think you you guys know, and I think we've made it clear that we want you to be in the building. At least I do. And I want to do whatever we can to make sure that happens. Well, except for giving the space away, which we can't do because we have taxpayers that right. we're accountable to, like you do. Some of the same taxpayers, in fact. So out there, taxpayers, we're trying to work something out for all of us. Um, and you know, I I agree with Jonathan. I think the formula is fair. But if if there are ways you see that we can come to an agreement. We can't give you a, a different offer than we're giving SCEMS, at least. I feel we should be, there should be equity for both Absolutely. you guys and SCEMS, and you know, hopefully all parties will benefit from this situation. But I, I'm not sure what you, so what do you feel the next step needs to be? Well, we got, we, we had somebody come in and, and do analysis of the area for how much we're gonna need, and I think that that's somewhere for next our next, meeting is next Tuesday. I mean, we're, we're in the process of just gathering numbers too and, okay. and just trying to drive the cost down for all of our different options and seeing where that where that goes and and we're also about to really figure out where the new new administration's direction and you know heart is going to be on this issue as well. <clears throat> we, so you'll drive your costs down as much as possible and we'll try to keep our costs as low as possible and hopefully they'll so, so you're telling me that STEMS is going to, whatever we charge, eight dollars plus whatever, they're going to be, they're going to pay eight dollars and something. They're not going to come in at a lower rate. It's the same formula. Okay. Yeah. It's I'm just. Yeah, it's the I'm, same I, I, square. I understand that. Yeah, we're but, not playing anybody off anybody else. All right. We just want to get. You have a question about that? Because right but, now we're getting nothing. Right. So we're on your side. Correct me if I'm wrong, but. The air conditioning and the heat that duct that's going along the ceiling, that's going to service what the school's interested in, also what SEMS is interested in? Negative. No, no? not SEMS. SEMS, SEMS will have their own separate new system. Okay, so that'll be cut off. Okay. Yeah, so we'll be on there to be that. You and, 
So, so actually, this, these, maybe, Dan, you can address that more, maybe. We're oh. actually be reducing the load on that current system that services where you folks will potentially be. Okay. There'll that's be like great. three supplies that'll be disconnected. Whether that's gonna increase the efficiency of the unit or they can tone it down a little bit, that's a question down the road too. Right. It's only gonna be separate well, just, from staffs. I just want to address the cost. And if it's being addressed separately, that's fine. Okay. But it's fair. Yeah. That's, the, that's when we're treating everyone the same. Both organizations are critical regional assets and service deliveries. No difference. Do you want to arrange some type of joint school scams? Um, I, I think we're going to have to I, I, at, I, some point. I, at some point in the not too distant future, but I think we also are waiting on um, the agenda item from the Deerfield tomorrow night. <coughs> that's on their agenda for tomorrow night. That's my understanding. Right. The RFPs. Uh, what, the, what they're going to do. What they're acting doing. acting well, on scams is on scams not scams on is scam on the booze recommendation. The booze recommendation. Um, and if that were to go through, then negotiations take place, and we need to have a meeting of the minds in terms of what's needed and what's not. If, so if, basically, we'll no more tomorrow night. Yeah, tomorrow night. The recommendation by the board is yay and nay. Or the recommendation from the boo was yay. And Understood. That's the recommendation that we're going to discuss. Yes, right, exactly, yes. And, and I, the, the recommendation is to formally enter into negotiations with the town of Waitley. And I have said to a few people now that the negotiations have to include, they're not between SCEMS and the two towns, but SCEMS has to be involved in those negotiations. Does Deerfield have the final say about STEMS? They're theoretically. The fiscal agents. They're the, so theoretically. So if they turn it down? I'm just, I'm just. I'm happy to have a private conversation with you, Bob, okay. about what happens if they turn it down. <coughs> well, but I. You know, don't forget if they you know, turn my, it down. It doesn't fly. My 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 whole thought is to use bays. <laughs> right. We'll give you the whole space. I th I think the sit down idea was a really yeah. good one, and uh, I I think as soon as you can schedule it, schedule it. We have a new superintendent with a blank schedule with a blank thing. Well, that, that'd be great. We have a new town administrator starting. Load her up. With, Load her up. With a blank schedule. <laughs> you guys too. get. The more information you're going to get tomorrow night or whenever you're going to yep. get it. Next yeah. Tuesday, we'll, we'll know about Deerfield and scams, and we'll have more information. Okay. So should we be contacting sure. you, Bob, or how are we going to be the point uh, person? Well, the the chair. Mar oh, I'm sorry, Mar I don't know. <laughs> Mar Marty's still taking emails for a whole month. She's so on you, so, so if I said you mean June. To, yeah, June thirtieth is right, her, which is three days away. Yeah, yeah but what I'm so saying is, she, but she, but she said yeah, she's she keeping her email thing. open for a whole month. So, so email Mari. Yeah. Okay. And then really? she. Yeah, I'll just. No, email. She's on vacation. Go, she's reti she's retired. Come on, yeah, her, really she's sure. retired. Or you will get email you. Well, we got a new. Yeah. We got a new. Yeah, I'm pretending. The payroll starts July first. Yeah. She works for you guys. <laughs> That's right. So who's who's the, who's your. Uh, Who's the head of your committee? This is a committee? Some Both of us. All three of us. So email anybody? Email, group email. Come on. I, you know I'll, what? I'll, I'll, I'm I'll, not going to, wait, wait, wait. I'm not going to take the meeting of the time of this meeting to go over who's going to be part of an email chain. Let yes. Mary figure it out. Okay, I'm going to email Bob. I'll start with you. Okay. Okay. Right, I'll probably have your email. Okay. Right, right. Good. Fish Hallis. Thank you. Say fish something. Fish right. Thanks, you guys. Yeah. This yeah. is all over the time. Just have to everybody all over the. They're broadcasting your email yeah. over the internet. Yeah. You don't want that. No. Thank you for your time. Thanks, Bob. All right. Let's move okay. on. Public comment? Okay. Moving okay. On. No public okay. comment. Mary Ellen, old business. Okay. I uh, had applied for approval for an extension for the special town meeting yeah. the deadline that we needed for the manganese water article. That came through. Uh, I have a, a warrant here which was uh, approved by. Town Council and Bond Council, and so I need you to sign that warrant if you so are so inclined. Have, have, okay. And the this well, water, water, water commissioners yeah, and the finance committee have uh, uh, recommended it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've talked about all those guys. You gotta. Oh, you get the Why are the appointments on there? No, that's wrong sheet. Sorry. Okay. No, that's okay. You can still sign the front sheet of the back. Okay. 
<coughs> I picked up the wrong thing with my printer. My handwriting is getting better. Okay, community contact. The it's getting better? Yep. Information really? in your yep. packets in your yep. files for tonight. Um, this is important if we can get this process started in terms of grants. Uh, because if we are a community contact, we'll get more points to yep. apply for grants. Um, there's areas of best practices to choose from. Uh, one thing I would ask for consideration, we have talked about kind of redoing the whole uh, budget process and the need to redo the budget process <coughs> and the finance management best practices is probably uh, a good area. I, it's one of the ones that I was looking at. Yeah. Um, I, I personally am, I, I don't think it's going to be a surprise to anybody. Economic development, I think, is, if we don't start thinking about economic development in this town in a, in a structured way, it, it's got to be part of this. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. I'm fine with that. Administration and finance. I mean, job creation, retention. I think, I mean, we can, I don't know everything. Let's but. steal GE from Boston. Would be. I think I think they're looking probably for like two. So I mean, complete streets is kind of a cool thing. I I and, and now that it's top of mind, every time I hit the corner between Swamp Road and North Street, it's a, it's every day it's an accident begging to be happening because oh, you can't that. see over the hill. Right. It's done that. But I, I think I think if they probably want you to focus on one or two initially. Initially, I'm not saying if the program continues and Governor Baker's reelected, I'm sure we could add more, but. I would do the budget. Chaired Police, South County, we tried that. That went over real big. That was a flop. That was set up to be a flop. And that was kind of annoying, actually. Um, Although, yeah, <clears throat> oh, competitiveness. Competitiveness, the only reason I say that is because it's, it's sort of umbrella, it's overarching. Shared development leads work together to strengthen the whole region. What, what are we trying to do here, Just, by the way? Fill out an application. Yeah, yeah so. I, it's an application that needs to be filled out, and then we send it into Boston, they sign off on it, and then. And you need from us two no, I would say no more than two. I no more than two. No more than two. Well, we're certainly promoting local agriculture, aren't we? We're well, already well, we do that already. Right, we do that. We've been there, done that, right? We do that already. Solid waste and site cleanup, we're very good at that. So it's the financial management I would, I would go for. <clears throat> A lot of the towns doing the financial management. Yeah, I mean, it's, it makes all the sense in the world. And the or regional, our, regionalization best practices or? Are we looking at the bullets or are we looking at the headers? Looking at the headers. Okay. So financial management. Financial management and you want to do housing and economic development best practices or you want to do regionalization best practices? I like economic development. Um, That's fine. So be it. I, I also like information technology actually, citizen engagement. Um, I mean, we're certainly, I don't know about cybersecurity. Transparency. I mean, we're pretty transparent. We're filmed. We're, you know, would the Boston legislature were transparent? That would be nice. Uh, but I like citizen engagement, that's and that's about the only one in information technology that let's, I'd be interested. Let's in. do financial management and uh, housing and economic. We have housing. We have a housing. Are you going to keep in mind our own resources? But it's regional. I mean, you're, you're re the regionalization concept of it and best practices and how do we work together with these towns. I don't know. E every town doing their own thing strikes me as. Well, we can do several things, right? Right? You need well, to no, two. We, are, we have two areas, and then what you do in each of those areas, establishing best practices. So, you, you're a, so right. you, the two would be, it sounds like, financial management best practices. There we work on overhauling the budget system, yeah. and then housing and economic and development. And we focus on just the economic development piece because we already have the housing. The competitiveness, yeah, preparing for success, infrastructure, job creation, infrastructure. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Those two. Those two. Okay. 
so we'll get that going. All right, Scams housing update. Okay, well, we kind of touched on that already with um, Deerfield will be considering tomorrow night the Board of Oversight recommendation. I don't know if you want to talk any more, Gary, about that, or if you want to address that. That's all I wanted to kind of update you on that. that. Okay, I mean, I don't know exactly. I haven't seen the letter that was sent to Deerfield or anything. And I don't know what communication they had with Tom Waitley so far. Right. I mean, we were just told that the, the, at, the, at the Deerfield last meeting, they had received the formal notification from the Board of Oversight in terms of their recommendation. But they took it under advisement, and they, the expectation was that they would deal with it at their meeting tomorrow night. Mm -hmm. And that's as much of that. And the advisement was to, enter, to immediately enter into negotiations with Waitley. Okay. By a 64 to 50 something vote or something. Well, it was the points. points. It was points. The right. points. But our point, point, our point, our point, our point, point system. Not to anybody's surprise, our which point. I kind of disagreed with their point system, but um, anyways, it's but we quite fared well with considering. Yeah. So. I mean, it was, uh, you know, it's the best option on the table. Uh, so if Deerfield turns it down, I, I, uh, I'd be very disappointed if we <coughs> get an explanation. Why they didn't go for Boop's right. recommendation? Uh, in which case, I will have egg on my face, but I don't think they will. I mean, our biggest thing was I think, know, it'll, I think it'll be two to one vote. We're just concerned about getting locked into uh, a commitment of not being able to expand if we need to down the road, and that was one of the reasons for the other option that was presented on the RFP in Deerfield. It was very limited. We had no room for expansion or anything. And your concern is that if, if my guess is that Scam's concern is going to be that if we also lease space to the schools, that opportunities for expansion is limited. Right. We, we want a long term. Right. We want to we want to settle this up long term. Right. And so for it's right. everybody. And so it's possible that the SCEMS decides that it just wants to lease the whole shooting match. Well, if SCEMS wanted to expand, I would think that would be an expansion in terms of vehicles, not just, you know, office space. Well, it would be, it could be both. It could be, you know, if you expand with vehicles, you're going to have to expand personnel. Right. But given the fact that this area, the landscape is losing population, it seems expansion won't be needed for a while. I mean, I think... <clears throat> There's a push to put them into the transport business so that they're going to break even, which is where all the money is. Transport, meaning... Just straight, I need to go to the hospital for my... Transport oh, people for that. To, to be an ambulance. <clears throat> right. Right. Well, that might be a good idea since it might be cheaper than well, the current private ambulance. Right. It so, generates... Yeah, cash flow, right, and 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 that would that would lessen the 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 tax need, the tax roll need. Well, the issue um, after one of the scams meeting in Sunderland uh, last month, maybe earlier this month, um, one of the members asked about expanding, you know, this building. And if you remember, when I looked up the initial plans for this building and the zoning uh, addressing in there. There's 35.5% of this lot that's covered, and we can cover up to 50% of it. So in the event that SCEMS came in here and found everything was working pretty well, they wanted to expand into this uh, transfer service and wanted to add another bay or something. There's plenty of room to do that. I mean, we'd have to figure that build-out cost yeah. as they go down the road. There's room to expand the garage forward. <clears throat> I've got an email and conversation I've had with the people that built this building, uh, waiting for them to get back as far as kind of a cost estimate on expanding the garage out 12 feet, you know, with a shed roof, expanding the office area out to the uh, further down, just like the window yeah, area is. Yeah. So, you know, there's plenty of room so, for that. So No matter where they go, if they're going to expand, they're going to have to build out, right? Unless they just build a really big facility anticipating future expansion to begin with and that'll be very expensive. Well that was one of the concerns with that other 
RFP that they had. You know, it was the place was pretty much maxed out already. Well, and they had the seven acres behind the fire district too, so they could build a whole new building there and make it much bigger. Yeah, that's gonna be talking more expensive. Talking big bucks, you know. Well, that's right. Um, and they, they've also talked about adding if they added a a fourth town, a fifth town, because because there's a there's some interest out there amongst towns to, to join us because you don't necessarily have to be a contiguous series of towns to satisfy needs well and if they just want to look ahead they right want to, they don't want to which is to. smart and if we get another town that defrays the cost even further right um so well, i don't know what this is the update this is the update and okay, we'll go no more after the vote in deerfield tomorrow night Right. Yeah. Okay, good. Okay. Um, so if they do vote to go into meeting negotiations, do you guys want to sit down with them? I can absolutely arrange a meeting. As soon as possible. Tomorrow night? I, if they vote tomorrow night to go into negotiations, you, you'll be here until Saturday. Yeah. Um, but then couldn't do anything, maybe if it's next week until Fred gets back. Probably not, right? Okay. So, okay. I'll Just leave to come around. The next what meeting is that? NBC. No, we're just about to talk about the town office time. building plan now. Yeah, <laughs> that's the next item. And we're on it right now, right? Town office building plan is on the agenda. The only thing I wanted to do, and if you can maybe just for a second, um, I did forget to bring the more recent version you had of, with the school in there and where you get moved the vault down towards my section. Um, but it, I wanted to verify you guys approve some kind of a plan because for Brian to work on, a, on an invitation to bid, for bid, um, he needs a plan to, to work with. So is that plan, that most recent version of the plan with the build out and has the entrance way, do you have that with you by chance, John? I couldn't hear you, I'm sorry. Um, oh. <clears throat> you have the vault down here, Yeah. basically. I like the vault. I talked to Lynn, she's fine with the vault where it is, given that we're, this is somewhat in a state of flux. Yeah. So she, she thinks and that's a good spot for the vault. So are you okay if Glenn works on, on a build out plan uh, and go out to bid for this section here and this plan as it exists? See, we could go ahead and do this entire wall. The vault is gonna be a separate structure right, right, anyway. Yeah. So we can still go ahead with our renovations you know, for all this. But we then felt better of having some <coughs> permanent spot for the wall, make some yeah. decisions for the wall yeah. as to where it's going right. to go. You can hang on to that. Okay, thank you. So, John, before you leave, the stairs. Those are file cabinets. Oh, those are file cabinets. I was going to say, what's what stairs? <laughs> and these are file cabinets. Well, they wanted to know, you know, how well, many file cabinets. They, they, file also, cabinets right the they, also have, they also have a deck up here, right? There is a right. deck. There's like a the loft. ladder goes up to a loft. loft. Yeah, there is a, a loft. Really yeah, that's not really room. useful that's, space. That's, that's outside the mechanical room. Yeah. Not usable. Right. So, John, really? this is all school space. Dangerous. space. Dangerous. Here. I like loft. Well, you can share it or that's cool. No, this would be for potentially scams. That's potentially scams. Oh, right, right, of course, right, right. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, all yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. But, yeah, this is the area I need you guys to approve so that Brian can get working on I'm that. fine with that. It gives, it, it gives, it gives, it gives yellow, the yellow. Right, it gives everyone enough work yeah. space. Right. Right. I just wanted some good. definite plan that's he, fine. that he can work right. with. Okay, okay, okay. we're Anything good. Else? You're good. No? no? Thank you. Um, Hayden Hill Road Mountain Street Project. Uh, Keith and I went to a, a joint meeting uh, mm -hmm. District 1, District 2, uh, Steve Kulik was there, Mary Jane Bacon from St. Rosenberg's office was there, um, and, and um, Northampton reps were there, as, as were reps from uh, Williamsburg and, and ourselves, um, to discuss the status of the project. Um, the reason it hasn't really moved forward up to this point is because um, of low scoring. The state's on this new yeah, scoring system. Sure. Yeah. And so it's low scoring. So it's a question of how to get it up, how, how to present the the request to the state to release the, the funds that have been set aside, um, and we're they're going to, Steve Kulik and uh, Stina Rosenberg are going to craft a letter, um, run it by the district one, district two people to see if the money can be released. I'm trying to make a long story short here. That's fine. And um, and then uh, Brian and Keith and the 
town administrator and uh, highway superintendent in Williamsburg will be meeting on July 12th here to decide who will be the, the lead town okay. uh, in the project. So we're, we're attempting to get it to move forward. The project being the development of engineering and uh, its specs? The design, trying the to get design. it to, to like, I think it was like a 25% the design ready phase to yeah. show what can be done and then hopefully the state will, will release the rest of the money that's need, needed. So there's a lot talking about uh, splitting up the project itself and doing the, the core center, which covers the drainage that affects uh, the Northampton Reservoir first, and then the build out the other two from there. So uh, both uh, planning commissions from Franklin County and Piney Valley were, were there as well. Right about those guys. So it was a large meeting. As long as as long as we don't get caught in a situation where. They just do the area around the reservoir, and they say, "Oh, now that the no, critical piece is done, we can walk no, away." No, this would be a complete design right. uh, build out. There may, if federal money is involved, there may be the possibility of uh, the towns would have to kick in some money. But Keith felt that at that point, as long as it's mostly done, that we could take Chapter 90 funds uh, at that point to help fund the rest. If it's split between the um, three, so Northampton hopefully will kick in some money, Williamsburg and Waverly. That's fine. I mean, I, to increase the scoring, and again, I, I'm being somewhat flippant here, but geez, read the papers in, in, in uh, Michigan and Toledo, Ohio, and other places that have had water catastrophes and people didn't plan well, ahead. And that's where they- We're trying to plan ahead. That's, cr that's the, probably the critical piece of, we'll get more scoring that didn't count the first round, but Keith was talking about the drainage issues. <clears throat> right. There, that it affects their plan water. Plan ahead. We are trying to plan ahead. Don't hold our hands back. But, okay, but all right. The state, uh, um, Steve and Mary Jane were very res receptive to what, what could be done at their level. So the okay. main impetus for this is to present, prevent washout and erosion? Well, the road itself, I mean, I mean, the, there's uh, um, the uh, winter relief money that uh, the towns got this past winter, or was it two winters ago, they, they, they had to take, both Williamsburg and Waitley had to take all of it just to fix that, those sections of their roads. Yeah. The road is in bad shape. Okay. And Keith would like to see um, Strip Road, and there's one other in, uh, intersection there, there that, that along the way that are dated. Weber. Weber, thank you. Uh, that are the, he wants to see those re redesigned because they're, they have they're, to be they're perpendicular to the traffic. Right. right, and they're not right now. No, they're not. And then with the new standards, you're talking bike paths and to, oh, nice. to make it more pedestrian accessible. Really, on a rural road, yeah. you need bike paths on a rural road. Oh, you do on that road, there's no shoulders. Well, no, that's true. There are no right. shoulders. And there's curves, so you have bikers and you have cars going 50 miles an hour and two cars coming together mm -hmm. and a biker, there's no room. I'm surprised there hasn't been right. real problems there before. Okay. Okay. Apparently, uh, of those projects that were uh, approved back when this project was, um, <clears throat> none of the ones in Western Mass have gotten it moved forward. So it's, it's just shocking. A, it's just a question of um, how, how to get it moved forward. But at least there's some okay. not finally some movement. Well, the highway administrators from District One and Two will be at the. FCSA meeting on Thursday and they, night. They were both there on at that meeting. Right, and so they'll 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 have an opportunity to talk with others about this. Are you going to that meeting? I am the head of the organization, so I'm going to have to I've been for I'm going three to years. defer to you. I I thought I was going to be able to go and now I don't think I can. Okay. Okay. All right. Um fuel bids. No, time and short. I was gonna say I have a few things here. You do? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Like Mark. <laughs> Sorry. A couple of things. Um, the, yes, Mark, what can we do for you? We can't talk, though, um, on Thursday about getting the Highway Police Fire Library phone system um, yes. onto um, our, what we have. Um, I did talk to Crocker. There can, it is both the uh, ability to transfer internally and externally, yeah, so, yeah. so that's not a problem. There's a little bit more involved in getting the library up to speed. There's a couple options that I think at this point I'd recommend kind of breaking that piece out, or maybe doing them in next year's budget. Um, and so 
I have a, a revised quote here breaking the library section out of $1,098.45 to get the police, highway, and fire department onto the 21st century. And the revised, did it go up a little? No, no, it didn't revise, it did not revise, it just breaking the library piece out. Oh, okay. Uh, giving me a new quote that didn't include the library. And Crocker, Cro Crocker suggested that or library piece, or this is? Um, the library has, has to make decisions in terms of connection issues. Uh, they are they either going to go with the NBI which is an additional cost, or they can go over the Comcast okay. line, but it involves then their broadband width is, is used up, and because the phones are through the internet, it could affect okay. quality. Uh, so I, I think at this point, because there's a lot more questions than answers right now, just to, okay. to go with uh, getting- Thank you for finding that information. Now. Getting these- I think we'll be in much better shape having it all together. Oh, and much better, and these guys are so psyched in terms of getting okay. the phone system. Uh, so if you're okay- so you Tell them Christmas comes on the 25th. Sure. Um, signed there, and then the, just me. Um, yeah, because you're the authorized representative. Um, for, uh, I'm going to keep going. That, and then there's the two pages after that too. Um, we had talked about Brian's schedule. I know you uh, you guys would like to see him work a 40-hour work week, um, and I know you want a presence on Friday. I would recommend still. Uh, right now, the building's open from nine to noon on Fridays. Um, go, going with that, with Brian being here from nine to noon. If he doesn't have that. if he doesn't have night meetings, then, then he's he, the town administrator. Okay, he has I just to do want to get out the, the, the. It wouldn't be an all day presence necessarily. But it's just to give, right. it gives him some flexibility. But he knows that if it needs to be an all day presence, sometimes it's an all day right. presence. Right, it just allows flexibility, so he's yep. not doing forty hours plus all the night yep. meetings to boot. And just so you know, this Friday he starts this Friday, but we we are definitely shutting down from one to four. Um, because we have website training that we're going to be uh, going through. Um, so we may see cars out there just for the public, but, but we are going to be uh, dealing with getting the website, getting training for that, and then potentially, hopefully, going live with the website sometime early next week. Cool. Great. Right. Okay. Um, we did have an issue with the, uh, when the library moved out, they, they took their phones with them, and we needed to get a new, um, system in place be, uh, be, to get our fire alarm. Um, so there's monitoring there. And I, we are gonna switch companies uh, a, a little bit cheaper for the monitoring. And once I get that paperwork, if you guys are okay, I'd like to be able to sign that contract and keep that moving. It'd be less per year. Less per year? And it's about $60 per year. There's cost. not a big startup cost or anything? Uh, well, to, to get to get it in place, it's about four hundred dollars. No. Um, but but the, but they're giving us a break. But the then, savings then, per then year. The, okay. the savings for the monitoring. So if you're okay, I'm going to sign no, that. No, we're good. Okay. Now we have the fuel bids. Uh, we um, opened fuel bids this afternoon. We had no bids for gas. <laughs> um, so we are going to go out to bid for that. I do, uh, just so you know, I do have the information for what the cog did this year for the bid program and I, um, I've already emailed Brian about doing an analysis for next year to see if we would benefit from going with the COG program. But for diesel, uh, the best price was Mirabito, um, which I know they have an office in Pittsfield. They were, um, um, the, the base price, the markup was 0.1765 per gallon plus the Massachusetts taxes. So that, if you're okay, I will write up the sure. to award then the, yeah. the bid for diesel. They were the lowest. We're going to go out uh, for gas. We got nobody for gas. Nobody for gas. Gasoline, you're talking Gasoline, about. Gasoline, yeah. Why not? <laughs> I don't know. Who do we usually have? Sandra or somebody? Uh, Sandra was last year, but they were fairly pricey. Um, Keith was hoping Ethel Roberts would bid, and they, they had the information. They did not submit a bid. Huh. They didn't either last year. Either. Right. Yeah, and I remember he was disappointed at that. I remember. Yeah. Right. I remember they came in. And I know we we know they got the information. Um, but they didn't seem in a bit. Well, I guess we have to go electric vehicle. Okay. There you go. That's one way to do it. Hydrogen. Well, let's just use solar. Okay. Okay. Um, I finally, it took me a while here, but I finally got three quotes for uh, janitorial services. Um, the lowest quote for this building was $310. Um, a month? A month. Uh, the, after that, it was 506 and 515, so it's clearly the lowest one. And the company um, is Kes, I'm not saying C E L S O. I'm not sure how to say it, but they, they did do this building prior when there was Western Mass Library. Oh, okay. Uh, if you're interested, 
we can get started with that. Um, I, excuse me, I mentioned and discussed with Mary Ellen talking with the school committee and seeing if there's any way, because I think you're after two and a half hours a week, roughly two, or two and a half. A little bit more, possibly. And just see if, I mean, we pay a full-time janitor at the school, whether or not we can use him at all or not. I did find out that the full-time the full guy down there is actually used more for maintenance, not cleaning. They actually use the nighttime person yeah. for, for cleaning. And there we would be getting into issues of um, benefits at that point. And it, I mean, right now he's not getting benefits, but adding more time in, he may, ch and it, he's, He's of the age right now, he can probably be on his parents' insurance, but in a couple more years, yep, he's, he's going to need health insurance. And that'll kick in some dollars. I understand. Yeah. Okay. I have no problem with that. Okay. So, um, uh, but there was the, I got quotes for the library too, but I'll give those to the trustees and they yeah. can decide what they're going to do. Now, but do we get a reduced rate if, we, if, if, if someone gets everything, or is that not the way it works? That's not the way it works. They're two separate buildings. Okay. So you want to sign no Mobile Club. <coughs> no Mobile Club is asking for their traditional use of town hall. Fine with me. Okay with Who that? submitted that request? Uh, Carl. <clears throat> Maybe they'll have some snow next winter. They must not have done a lot of snowmobiling last winter. Oh. Yeah. Okay, I thought you were going to say something. Uh, I chose not to. Okay. Regional sign making program. The COG, um, I guess this has been a long time in, in the making, but they have purchased equipment for um, to do so. Franklin County Highway Departments can make the, our own signs, mm -hmm. and this is a huge savings. Uh, talked to Keith earlier today, and he said the library wanted a sign. Um, they've had trouble with uh, bikes taking up spaces in, um, in the parking spaces, and I guess it can get pretty, pretty crowded on Saturday. Okay. Bicycles. I don't understand, and, but to make the sign would cost a lot of money just to, to actually go out and get it. He said, with, with this program, all, we're just paying for the the uh, plate itself, but and then, then we can have a post and yeah, very cheaply. So he really recommends that we get signed up for this program. Okay, well, it doesn't cost. Yeah, that's good. Fine. Well, it'd be some, like I said, minimal cost, but it's, yeah. it's going to be a savings. But we'll only cost what we buy when we right. spend what we buy. Okay. Um, then. Skim board oversight appointment. Uh, combined with the appointment list, you can do both of those together. And, and I'd like to add, I, I, because I think she's going to say yes. Okay. Um, Carrie Gross to the list. Carry with a C. With a C A R Y. Okay. She's relatively new. Okay. And what's the town? She wreck. We have a vacant town wreck. Okay. And grows G R O S. G R O S S. Yes. Um, and we'll know if she chooses not to take it because she won't commit this morning. Okay. Uh, but she's expressed um, interest in getting involved with youth sports in town. Okay. Uh. Fred did email me on this from Michigan, um, and he is suggesting that somebody other than Lynn be appointed to the COG. Um, Wait, uh, hold on. Where why are we? Why is he suggesting that? Okay. Um, well, he feels um, that she hasn't really um, provided you information with countywide issues. In, in her defense, I, I don't think she's been asked to, and um, so there there are reports. Apparently, there's quarterly reports that Brian. If well, I'm going to check to make sure Brian's getting that one on his email, that can be forwarded to you if you want to be, to be more up to date in terms of what's going on at the COG, or if he sees there's something that really pertains specifically to Wakey that would be a major urgency. I mean, I think we should always get updated as, as it pertains to Whaley. Okay, but there, if there really is nothing going on at the time, I'm not sure. If, if, I mean, do you want to see the reports and you can decide if you feel, or do you want Brian to take I would like out? somebody else to look at the reports. I'd like Brian to look at the reports. Okay, okay. I mean, he, he is suggesting either the town administrator or a select board member be the appointee and he would volunteer if needed. He be? Fred. I think the town administration should do it. 
and then and then the time management should touch base with the chairman of the board. So, so you want to make Brian your your cog representative then? Oh, oh, the cog representative. I, I, don't I mean, know. I wanted to save Fred for the boot, unless. Well, there's that you need to do too. I mean, you, the cog is asking for an alternate representative this year too, which is a, a new thing. So, mm -hmm. right. I mean. Um, we have a keeper of the pound here that could probably do that too. <laughs> I'm pretty impressed. Yeah, right, with the pound. <laughs> it's now a uh, oh. geocache site. Tell <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah, for> <laughs> people, don't park there, you're going to get killed. You're searching for their little treasure. I'll, 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 I don't get that. You're dealing with Bitcoin or something? I, no. No, geocache is just in the kids. You, you find it, you leave it, you do something. But it's all GPS on your phone. Yeah, I'm not I mean, my people, phone, people from Pittsfield are there. Right, right. The, 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 the milk bottles. The milk bottles got one. Now, yeah. the, now the pound has one. I don't know what you're talking about, but I don't care. All right. <laughs> I, I'm from, if Fred can have that, I'll, I'll take the bill. You will? Oh, you're a saint. Thank you. Okay, but do you want, should it be Brian, or you can keep Lynn? I mean, it's not. Uh, no, that's true. well, that's a fair point. Why are we replacing Lynn? Does Lynn want to be replaced? I mean, she's not, she's fine, uh, no, but she said if somebody wants to do it, she's fine with that. Or, or you have the option, we've talked about the option of making Brian the executive council representative, but letting her be on the finance committee, because she does have senior, she's chair of the finance committee at the COG. Lynn is? Yeah. And so, I mean, there, there's precedent, Shelburne did the same thing, they had one of their finance committee members stay on the, the finance committee at the COG. I don't care. I know you guys do. I know. Uh, if I, or you can hold off on it until Fred gets back if you want to have a conversation with Fred in the room. Well, well and also to have a conversation with Lynn. Lynn's the appointed well, authority. Well, when was the last time this organization but, but, but eliminated John, 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 The problem was that Fred had taken exception to Lynn's performance as the uh, rep, right? Was it? Right. Isn't that what we just said? I can read you the email. I would suggest appoint some, someone other than Lynn because I don't see her interacting very much with the select board, especially on county-wide issue. I would suggest either the town administrator or a select board member by the appoint, be the appointee. I would volunteer if needed. Well, then let Fred be the appointee and Lynn's got enough to do. I, I, I mean, that's okay with me. I would suggest Brian. Brian? That's fine with me, too. As long as it's not me, I'm good. <laughs> really. Or keep Lynn. Or keep Lynn. I'm happy. But I need something. I need something to put down. You said Brian. Brian's fine. What do you think, John? And keep Lynn on as your fin finance yes, committee fine. chair. Yes, sure. Brian. Brian, and then she Lynn stays on as finance. And committee. we can revisit it at a later date. That's okay with Lynn. That's okay with me. Right, but I don't want to tick off Lynn. Lynn, I don't see Lynn. We have not. Made, we have made no demands of Lynn in terms of information gathering. It's not like she's been remiss in her duties. Right, these are additional duties. No, she's not I, I, I get that. She's doing it out of the you know as a volunteer, right. and and it's not like she's doing anything. I, I, right, she hasn't done anything wrong. No, no. So so I mean, what Brian could do is just make sure you guys get the reports so so that Fred can read the reports. Let's have Brian do it. Brian can be one of an august crowd up at the COG and we'll keep Lynn on finance. Okay. That's fine. So are you okay with all the rest of the appointments? And, and did you say you're going to do scams? The, the he did I will say try. I heard him. I will try. Okay. And police is going back to three year. So no, two years. No, two years. Yeah, I made that change. Maybe it is. contract to July 2017 right. signed a new one you're saying July 2017 is a year away right but it was a two-year contract you you did it last year you, re you renegotiated this contract last year so it's a two-year contract right but so it's in the first year. July 17 oh so yeah, right, 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 right I'll be on the second year okay let's see no I, I guess all these people are doing good work I don't know. We only have two representatives. I mean, what about, about the size of the building committee? I know everybody, almost everybody. Where's the building committee? At the last page. 
John Edwards is on the top of the list. I, ah. He wouldn't crush him to be off. But he would not crush me. No, I know. Well, he doesn't go to the meetings anyway, according <laughs> to some people. And I would recommend you get it down to five. I have no problem leaving the municipal building committee, and and I can I can I can swing my iron fist as a select board member I if I need to. Nothing to do with you. <laughs> you can fall on your <laughs> sword here, John. Yes, I will leave the building committee because I have assumed a different role. Okay, so you're not going to be <laughs> yeah, the delinquent. <laughs> no, I'm not with the M. Oh, I thought that was your new with role. The building board. committee was to be delinquent, a truant, and that's seven. So. Well, it's actually eight because Dan Kennedy is the one that he's on through the finance committee. He's an appointment. Well, yeah. can we just can we get rid of people? Is that you can do what you power? want. Yeah, but, but you're, you're appointing them. Well, personally, I don't want to get rid of Adelia, Virginia, Judy, or Anita. But they should become a consulting to both the select board and the building committee. Well, do you want to remove all of the select board members? No, you need Fred. Why? He's pretty involved. Well, he'll be involved regardless. He's, I, I think he's you know what? vice chair or something. He's no. the acting chair, the acting I believe. Chair. Well, we can't we can't get rid of our fellow. So no, we can't. Um, just get rid of John. <clears throat> no, these guys all work really hard. They did, and John is working hard. Right. Uh, you know what? You can always. It's good to make a little progress and accentuate the positive. We've reduced by one. So you're okay with everybody else and yeah. gonna add? Oh yeah, they're doing it. Well, assuming they're everybody wants hard. to stick on. Which we'll find out. Now, the, uh, I'd like to, yeah, sorry. I'm sorry, you're, and I'm moving you down to Boo. Yeah. And Boo, and Pose. I'm sorry, Paul. So the Energy Committee, I suggest we get rid of Michael Griswold since, well, A, we could get rid of all of us since we never meet, but <laughs> <coughs> Michael is gone. I don't know where he, oh, he's where he ever is. been at a meeting. Okay. Well, do you want to get rid of the committee? Yeah. No. No. Oh, how about the uh, search committee? Could we formally get rid of that? Search committee for what? <laughs> well, I think when he signed the contract, we were, we were done. Okay, so we have no legal obligation. Right. Yeah, no. I'm not going to get hurt by the attorney general. Um, I'm actually surprised we only have two councils on it, two council on aging members. Well, the, the due for reappointment. Have right. More members, but these are the ones that terms of terms Do you want to keep both capital improvement and personnel? Do I? Yes, you. No. I'd be happy to be off one of them. I'll do other connections. Maybe Fred wants to be on both of them. He's, gonna take my place. He's already on five committees. Does he? Is he retired? Is that? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, I remember I used to be a fence viewer and field driver, but I had to resign because I didn't know what it was. <laughs> Do you want to put Fred on capital improvement? I don't know. Sure. Uh, well, you mean have two of us on? No, do I take you off capital Yeah, program? fine. If you're only on. Wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. I'm looking down this list. And if Paul is removed from... One of those two. Capital. I'm going to be chair of this year, John. <laughs> we, have a, we have a plan to reduce Paul's load. That I means you're going to be on one committee. Yeah. Impeach me. <laughs> what? <laughs> you're going to be on one committee. No, two. You're on the energy committee, and that is very <laughs> tight. That's right. <laughs> That's right. All right, fine. Make, make, if so Fred wants to do, if Fred wants to do it, which one? Right. Capital improvement or personal? Uh, I, I don't care which. I think capital improvement. Capital is a good improvement. One, yeah. Okay, fine. Because we're just a town that can't say no. I can say no. <laughs> okay. So, so you have any other Everybody business? else. Everybody's Everybody else cool. Else yeah. All right. Um, anything else? Yes. Oh. Uh. <laughs> um, good. The. CPC last Wednesday voted to um, approve $900, spend $900 for uh, the COG to do the RFQ for the town building. Um, I have an agreement here uh, from the COG uh, that, that needs a signature for their services. I um, saw some of the emails regarding the, this process, and Alan McArdle's been the, the, the 
point person for the process, and I suggested that <coughs> Brian starting on Friday that Brian could potentially take over. I would agree with that 100 percent. He's a lawyer. And Alan was very happy to hear. Oh, I'm shocked. That he as well. Say. So if he's agreed to sign this contract, I will let Andrea know that after Friday, Brian will be the point person. I'm fine with that. Okay. Absolutely. I hope that he picks up that license. Well, what's our RFQ? Request for qualifications, as opposed to request for proposal. Yeah. Qualifications is just I'm really good. And for the architect, right? Yeah, and then you. Oh, I see. They sell themselves. Yeah, and then you sort of. So but it's not. So there's no formal. So when might the RFQ be going out? I, I saw the timeline. Basically, the plan is to have bid ready documents. I believe by October. I think. They're in a couple stages of the draft right now. Um, the deadline that there's a going to be a walkthrough for the bidders. I think July 14th maybe, and um, then it's going to kind of work, work from there. Okay. So the RFQ goes out. And it's a higher person that's going to do the RFQ perform the right ultimately to, to make the bid ready documents. Right. Anything else? I did good. All right. Motion to adjourn. Second.